where Shepherdsville Road crosses Fern Valley Road. 911 operator at low. Something suspicious. Signs of wires being cut. I think I might have tried to steal some wire out of a pole, couple of things. They were looking at it and trying to get inside the pole. It was out in the open, clear as day, around noon on Friday, April 5th. Dispatch sent officers to the adjacent McDonald's. There are two subjects in the parking lot trying to steal the copper. Eight minutes later, when police arrived, the thieves were already gone. They were both cars, nothing so. They continue to be a step ahead, especially on a much bigger stage. <laughs> on stretches of Louisville's busiest, most traveled roads, the lights aren't on, and many haven't been on for months. Sometimes when the lights do get repaired and replaced, they get hit again. In most cases, the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet says it's because thieves have cut the lights by cutting out copper wire. Obviously, if they're taking the copper, they're selling it somewhere. It's probably somebody with some kind of some knowledge on electrical systems on how they work because um, they're pulling live wires. Chances are you could get shocked, but th they know enough that that's not happening. While LMPD is on the case, KYTC says miles and miles of copper wire have been stolen so far. The cost uh, associated with the loss of the wires is right about a million dollars. And according to state data on state maintained roadways, only the Bowling Green area has dealt with the same issue of stolen copper wire over the last five years. It's been about a $153,000 problem in South Central Kentucky. Clearly, there is a difference. And driving up here, you most certainly can see the difference. 24 interchanges right now that are dark. That's just in Jefferson County. And KYTC says the blackouts due to stolen copper wire are mainly concentrated around and within the Waterson Expressway. Lights are also out on five stretches of Interstate 64, seven spots on I-65, and on 71, exit 2 at Zorn Avenue, as well as at the split with 264. That amounts to about 1,400 lights. 24 interchanges, more than 1,400 lights out in your district. How concerning is that for well, you? Very concerning. I mean, the lights are there for a purpose, and certainly it's related to questions of safety. Our focus investigation reveals how prevalent the problem is. And State Senator Gerald Neal now knows how costly it is. A million dollars. That's quite a bit of money. Unless there's some kind of security apparatus that's uh, calculated to take care of that, then that's going to be a common cost. Dark times, dangerous times, especially in bad weather, persist as past surveillance and security efforts have failed, according to KYTC. Finally, seeing the light, the cabinet says, would be when there's no wire to steal. A pilot project is planned this summer at two interchanges using solar lighting. They're copper wireless, but also more expensive. Is this something maybe the state should invest in more if it proves to work? At the end of the day, it's going to be a cost either way. John Charlton, WHS 11, on your side.